Hi everybody. Hi, um, my name is Ruth um, and I'd like to welcome you to today's devotion. Um, I will be taking you through 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 11 to 13 um, and this morning I will be reading from the NIV Bible. I have made a fool of myself but you drove me to it. I ought to have commended, I ought to have been commended by you, for I am not in the least inferior to the super apostles, even though I am nothing. I persevered in demonstrating amongst you the marks of a true apostle, including signs, wonders, and miracles. How were you inferior to the other churches, except that I was never a burden to you? Forgive me this wrong. So those are the words um, from the NIV Bible. Um, prior to this chapter, we read about and hear about Paul's experience of his weakness and how he had asked God um, to take away those weaknesses from him. However, in sort of all of it, we hear God's response to him. And I guess it's the same God will say to us if we ask the same question. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Um, and off the back of that comment, Paul then reframes his weakness and instead of seeing it as something he should be ashamed of um, and disappointed in, he's able to put it in context of, you know, who God is and he is accepting of it. Um, he's not accepting of his weakness because it's acceptable. He's accepting of his weakness or the thorn in his flesh because God's power is magnified in his weakness as he relies on the power of God. Um, for when you and I are weak um, and when we are not strong um, because of you know our strength is failing us um, it's important I guess from all of that that we take on the importance of relying on the strength of God. Today I will be continuing continuing that thread of discussion um, and talking about sort of Paul's points post the, the, the talking about or boasting in the strength of God. Um, so here we see in this part of the of Second Corinthians, we see Paul boasting in Christ, uh, sorry, apologizing um, for talking a lot about himself, um, you know, even though he was boasting in Christ to an extent. But I guess during um, when you read the book of Second Corinthians, he does talk a lot about himself and he was apologizing for it. Um, and he used a peculiar word I spotted, which was, I have made a fool of myself, but you drove me to it. And I thought upon reading it, it sounded like he was apportioning blame to, for speaking <laughs> about himself, but he was apportioning the blame to the Corinthians. And I thought, well, why did you talk about yourself so much? <laughs> um, and then when I looked through the book of Second Corinthians, um, again, I had a better understanding. So he spoke about himself um, a lot and his I guess his accomplishment because he did it for the sake of the Corinthian church because he wanted them to know that he was effective he was an effective minister of God um, you know there was not a lot of respect necessarily for him um, and people wanted him to prove himself um, and he just wanted to show them that he was as good as um, you know every bit as good as an apostle as his other opponents um, so the people who claimed to be sort of super apostles he was just as good as them um, it's important to note that in all of this, Paul's claim or his boast as such were about the effectiveness of his ministry. Um, and this is not something that is um, new in the Bible. So when you look at sort of the start of Jesus's ministry, um, sorry, the notion of effectiveness is not something that is new in the Bible. When we look at the start of Jesus's ministry, we see that John the Baptist sent his messengers to ask Jesus um, if he was the promised one um, or if they should go and look for another. And Jesus answered, go back and tell John what is happening. So he lets the effectiveness of his ministry, what was happening, speak for him. And uh, Paul, I guess, was doing the same. Um, when he, you know, he wanted to guarantee the reality, uh, he wanted to guarantee the reality of the gospel when he preached in Corinth. And to do that, he had to talk about his experiences and how God had used him. Um, he, he, and I guess part of that was also referring to the church in Corinthians, you know, by talking about the things they had done and how grace abounds in all of this and referring it back to God. So, yeah. Um, so I then looked at what effectiveness is. And I guess effectiveness is the proof of 
reality effectiveness is the proof of an action as such um the effectiveness of the church is not um in the splendor of its building is not in you know the, the elaborateness of worship um or you know or wealth of the church or the size of the church it's in the stand it's it's, it's in seeing lives changed um, and if no life is changed you have to ask the question how effective is your church um, and i guess it's life being changed of people in the church and lives being changed of people maybe not in the church um, or i guess maybe your community seeing change in your community that's a good way to measure effectiveness um, the one standard that paul um, and his apostles would be judged by in terms of effectiveness would be um, bringing the life-changing grace of Jesus to men. And this is what um, Paul was trying to explain to the church in Corinthians. Um, in the final verse, um, verse 13, Paul mentions that um, he was never a burden to the church um, and because he wouldn't accept any he wouldn't accept any money from them so verse 13 reads how were you inferior to other churches except that i was never a burden for you um forgive me this wrong and it wasn't because paul didn't need the money uh, not at all actually he probably had you know he probably had needs that finances would have met but um paul was trying to explain to the church that you know yes money is important um but what was more important to him was their hearts. Um, what was more important was to them, was for him was them choosing to follow God and live according to the ways of God, um, which I thought was quite an honorable thing. Um, I guess when I did some research into this, I came across a, a word or a story by a guy um, called Herbert Leslie Gee, Gee, Gee? forgive my pronunciation, who's an English writer. Um, he tells the story of a tramp who came begging to a good woman's house. Um, she went to give him some, so she went to give, to get something to give him and found that she had no change in her house. So she went to him and said, I have not a penny of small change. Um, I need a loaf of bread. Here is a pound note. Go and buy the loaf and bring me back the change and I will give you something. The man executed the commission and returned and she gave him a small coin. He took it with tears in his eyes and he said, it's not the money, madam, it's the way you trusted me. No one has ever trusted me like that before and I can't thank you enough. It's easy to say that the woman took a risk that only a soft-hearted fool would have taken, but she had given the man more than money. She had given him something of herself by giving him a trust. Um, I know that I can testify to this in my life. Um, that during the times when I guess I felt like that poor man, um, the moments that really mattered and blew me away or stopped me in my tracks were the moments when people in their church offered their homes to me. And they offered their hearts, they offered their space, their loved ones. Um, you know, they just allowed me to come in and be accepted. And those precious gifts have sort of stayed with me and influences me to do the same. Um, so this is off the back of um, verse 13 and I guess it's important to remind everybody that money is very good yes money is very good um, and it helps with the ministry and it helps and we should keep giving and giving because that is the only way to ensure the ministry continues but it's important to also give of ourselves um, and give with love you know money is important but there's an element of giving to ourselves and I think that goes over and beyond money sometimes um, to finish, I will tell you a story of a young man and his wife who were stopped in the streets by a beggar. So there was a young man and his wife um, who were on their way out and they got stopped in the street by a beggar. Um, the husband felt his pockets to see if he had any money to give the beggar, but um, he had no money. Um, impulsively, he stretched out his hand to the man and he said, my brother, I can give nothing but this. And he offered his hands and the beggar said, you called me brother, you took, you took my hand that too is a gift. Um, a comfortable way for us as a church to discharge our duty to charities, to fellow men, to the poor, to needy, is to give money um, and there's nothing wrong with it. But um, it's far from everything. Um, for in all true giving, we must also give of ourselves, a substance of ourselves. So money is great, but we also need to give ourselves. Um, so let us ask God to give us wisdom to know how to um, manage that effectively. Um, 
so yes that is what i have for today <laughs> uh, from second corinthians chapter 12 verse 11 to 13.